What's up team, welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, we feature Coach Travis Woodham. Travis started his business around a year ago last summer and has grown and has trained uh, at this point over 20, uh, 24, 25 clients, I believe. Today, he's gonna share his story, exactly how he started, how he grew his business. This is perfect for you if you are just starting out. Maybe you've been in business for a while, but if you haven't started your business, make sure and listen to every word he says today. That kind of just snowballs into your next one. You know, you gain more confidence as you do it. Right. Um, and I can tell you this, Ben, too, like I am way more confident than I was back to that first client. Right. Because, um, you know, experience, that's, that's what breeds confidence. So yeah, it's, it's been great. It's the name of the game, man. And yeah. it's, it's funny. I, I look back at the first client I ever worked with, like the ones who actually paid me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I remember when they gave they gave me it was a ten dollar bill and five ones like I'll never forget it was fifteen bucks <laughs> and I remember when I got to my car I was like I was so happy like it it was like one of the weirdest feelings because I I remember like they didn't pay me that much money but All right I, I remember getting in the car and I had that in my wallet and I remember I like stared at it that night and I was like. I know I can get more people to pay me $15. <laughs> yes. And and it goes back to what you're saying though. It's once you get the first client, it's the, the floodgates open up, you get more confidence, more people start to get to know who you are. Um, that's really cool. So after I'm, I'm really curious, after you got that first client, when, when did you get your second client? Do you remember how close that was together? Oh yeah, it's a good question. Um, Grant was my first one. Um, and that's, I basically signed him up on the spot at that first clinic day. The dad came up to me. He's like, Hey, let's do it. I was like, let's go. Um, and then Lizzie was my second one and she was directly from the Jordan Lake football club, which I helped do technical sessions once a week for now. Um, and I think that was only about, I want to say three to four weeks or maybe even sooner than that. But I was, I was actually completely content with just my one client at the time, honestly, because I felt like this is a slow build and I kind of want to just do it right. Mm -hmm. um, especially with actually doing it part time because I didn't jump ship yet um, mm -hmm. with my other job. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still basically full time salary at my 323 sports job. Um, so anyway, I wanted to do a slow, slower build and just make sure I was doing it right. Um, but yeah, I think it was about three weeks in between the first two, I want to gotcha. say. Gotcha. Um, but I think now actually I count them up then. From last year to now, I have I've, I have had trained 23 kids overall. That's awesome. Yeah, that includes my groups as well. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I, I had a really interesting chat with someone recently. Um, and we talked about like, just not trying to measure things from like day to day. Like if you look at the last 12 months, I mean, if you just put that on paper, essentially you over the course of a year, it's like every other week you had a new client who ended up joining your program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's awesome. Cause like, if you think over the course of like one year, two years, five years, like you'll have hundreds of kids at that point who have come through your program. A lot of those kids are going to be staying in your program for long periods of time. And, uh, it's cool to think about just like the long term type of vision. Cause you know, it's, it's not going to be a race to get a hundred clients. It, it mm -hmm. takes a long time for, you know, any coach to get to that type of level, but you're well on your way, man. And it's, it's amazing to see the growth you've had over the last year. And I remember when you ran that clinic, cause I, I think we either talked over the phone or it was over Instagram yes. or something. Um, were you, so were, were you nervous when you ran that clinic or not? Oh my goodness. Yes. I mean, the fear of man is built within us, you know, like, the fear of failure is one thing. And also just the fear of, man, what other people think about you, you mm -hmm. know, and nervousness. I mean, and there's, I think would say nervous energy too, because I was excited. Right. Um, it's an excited nervousness. Mm -hmm. um, and you think of like pro athletes. I mean, they still throw up before games because right. they want to perform well, right. you know, it's, it's just the performance factor. So, but yeah, I was, I was pretty nervous, but um, I think talking with you actually really helped you know, just calm my nerves and be like confidence. Like, look, the action takers, they, they're the ones that, that finish. So, and I was like, you're right, man. I just got to take this action, just go for it. And 
a year later, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have 23 clients. So right. that's yeah. awesome. No, it's so cool, man. When you just plant that one seed and to me, that's, that's the, that's the final difference between people who end up doing this and they do it for long periods of time or people who think about it and they talk about it and they want to do it. It's, it's you just take imperfect action. You start out, you see what happens. Um, yeah. And I mean, I can, I can look back at the very beginning with, with my stuff. There was so much stuff that I did at the beginning where like, I just, I just kind of did it without thinking. I was just kind of naive. Um, right. Cause I, cause I knew long-term it's like, I just need to get to know kids. I need to get to know parents and I'm going to do whatever I can to get in front of them. And, uh, that first type of clinic that you ran, it's a perfect way to start. Cause ultimately, you know, it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not having to mess with payments. Like people can come and, you know, if they like it, they like it. That one kid wanted to join your program after that. So the parents saw immediate value and, um, you know, people either decide to do stuff like that or they don't. Most people don't. That's, mm -hmm. that's the thing I've seen is most people would rather not take that chance. Um, and then three years later, they're like, you know what, now I need to do it. So, you know, a lot of people are, are held back by fear, but yeah, you know, by taking that step, you took the plunge and you know, you're at where you're at now because of the hard work that you put in. I appreciate that, Ben. And of course, the great advice by Ben Neighbors too. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, man. It has nothing. Uh, I mean, it has the, the way I always approach it is like, I love helping coaches and like, yeah, we have coaches that are in our, our group coaching program, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the person has to take action. Yeah. Like I can tell someone what to do if they don't do it. Like, you know, it does, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just like training kids. Yes. He's like, look, I can guide you in a session of what to do, but I can't go home, hold your hand and like, right. All right, do your, do your skills, you know, do your homework. But it's like, it's up to the kids. And right. it's just like adults, you know, it's up to us to make the actions, the right. action takers. You yeah. always go back to that. Yep. Yeah. And I think a good example is like, I had sessions this morning with a, a group that I work with and there's a couple of kids that want to play in college. And, you know, we've been going over the process of getting recruited and all that. And, and I told both of them, I was like, you know, I'm going to show you what to do. And this has already worked for other players who are playing college right now, but like, I'm not going to go home and babysit you. Like right. you have to like pick up the phone and start calling coaches. You have to write the emails. Um, and it's like that with everyone, just like you said, like, I, I know a lot of people that that's the thing that holds them in the back the most is it's really not even the information. It's just the, the lack of taking action. Yeah. That's uh, what it comes down to. Yeah. So I know you're, you're based out of, is it North Carolina or South Carolina? It's, it's North Carolina. So, um, I technically live in Clayton, North Carolina, which is basically South of Raleigh, which gotcha. is the capital. So cool. yeah, gotcha. I like it. Yeah. We, my, my brother went to, uh, UNC Charlotte. Oh yeah. It's a great program. Not sure how far that is away from you, but we, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was in high school, we played in a tournament in Cary, North Carolina. Yes. And uh, I remember they had a, an incredible complex. And uh, we, I thought our team was, was really good. We were, we were these cocky Texas boys. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember our first game of that tournament, we, I forgot who it was. It was a team based in North Carolina. And uh, they just absolutely smashed us. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we're not that good. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the talent here, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Um, North Carolina Football Club, you know, being in the USL, you know, having a professional club in your city is, I think, is a big deal. Um, and also um, the women's team, the women's professional team, the Courage, North Carolina Courage, have done very well in their very young years of existence because I believe they started in 2018 or 17. You have to fact check me, guys, but – they won two um, league titles already out of like the gotcha. two to three years, which goes, goes great for, you know, there's, there's a hunger for soccer here. And I think, um, so the market's great here. You know, I can't complain at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. And there's I, no excuses. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I feel like all of the best college teams are based out of North Carolina too. Like Duke, uh, 
I mean, all the top D1 schools are in that area. Um, yes. So I know they're going to attract all the top talent uh, f- from that area. I, um, but yeah, that's, I feel like that's one of the, like when I look at the U S I look at North Carolina, I look at Florida, mm-hmm. Cali, uh, like Seattle, you know, slash Washington area. I feel like the, that and like Kansas city, that, mm-hmm. those areas are just booming right now. Oh yeah. Uh, with parents who have kids that play soccer. Um, so who do you like, if you had to break down your program, who do you try to specialize with? Like what sort of age groups are you kind of looking to, to hone in, hone in more on? Yeah, that's actually a great question, Ben. I've, I've been thinking a lot about that because as I told you earlier, I have, you know, clients who are two to four years old. Um, but I also have clients who are in high school. Right. So, and I think part of it for me, it's like hard for me to say no to money. I mean, mm-hmm. innately, this is how I went, how I am sometimes. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I have to figure out as well, like, okay, where am I in my groove with a certain age group? Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm just trying to take those times to notice myself as well and be like, man, I really enjoyed training that high school student or uh, I didn't love training the two to four year old, you know, and that's kind of figuring it out, but there's pros and cons with both. And I, and I think sometimes I just have to focus in as I grow and scale my business to say, okay, what group should I really focus on? Mm-hmm. And, I, and if I had to say something now, Ben, I would probably look in that middle school group age range, I think right. for me. Yeah. Um, 12, 12 year old to 15. Mm-hmm. I think that's my groove right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that transition from middle school soccer to high school, I mm-hmm. think is, is great. Um, I've had majority of my one-on-ones are in that group. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't had a ton of experience with kids who are over 16. Um, I think I would like that. I think I, I like working with higher skilled players. Obviously there's some easier aspects to that as well. Cause sometimes typically the older athlete would be, have a little bit higher work rate. Mm-hmm. Not all the time, but right. <laughs> right. you know depending on how committed they are mm-hmm. um and you know feeding off that that type of energy as well um is cool but i haven't i haven't experienced a high school age group yet um mm-hmm. to really figure that out if that makes sense right no it absolutely does uh i've i've talked to a lot of coaches about this recently and i know when i started I was so stubborn. I was like, I'm only going to train boys that are 14 to 18 that want to play in college. And that was like, that's all I cared about. And Mm -hmm. then I realized I was like, wow, in in my city, there's probably five boys every year that ended up going to play in college. (laughs) So like the market was, the market was too small for me. Um, Mm. And then I was like, I I just had this thing in my head, right? I never wanted to train girls. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know why that was the case, but over the years I started to realize for me, and I don't know if it comes down to my coaching style or, or, or anything, but it's so much easier to train girls than it is boys. Like, do you see that? I, I would have to agree with you, Ben. Yeah. I would. I think their attention is a lot better. Right. I, th- I don't know what it is about women that separates the men from that, but it's just how it is, I guess. Right. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I, I've thought this is kind of just a Texas thing, but I, I, I don't think it is because I've talked to enough coaches now. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like girls that are, you know, middle school slash high school, they just have more respect. And I feel like they take mm-hmm. it more serious. That doesn't mean boys don't take it serious, but I just feel like they're a lot easier to work with and they get more locked in on the session and with what they want as far as development. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, most of the kids I train right now, 95% of the kids I train are girls now. <laughs> like it's almost an all girls academy now. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome uh, though. Yeah. And there's a lot of coaches now that have started to uh, kind of go in that direction because they enjoy training girls and that's, they feel like they can get better results with girls than boys. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, I'd love to encourage you with this, like, it took me a really long time to figure out exactly who I wanted to train. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know you've been doing this, you know, seriously for the last year and the more experience you get, 
the more you're going to be able to hone in on, all right, who is that type of player? Who are these types of parents that we like to, to draw into our program? And uh, it's, it's just all going to come down to that experience. And it's really good though, that you're willing to train players from all different ages. Cause like that gives you the experience to see what it is you like and what you don't like. Right. Yeah, I, exactly. And that's kind of how I approached it was mm -hmm. not necessarily trial by error, but more just, you know what, I'm just going to experience this type of age group. Like mm -hmm. just put myself out there and, you know, see what I'm made of type thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, and I think, like you said, over time and experience, the more that I do it, um, the more I think that would become more um, clear as far mm -hmm. as what age groups I want, really want to hone in on. Mm -hmm. um, and what you mentioned about the girls too, like I would have to agree with that as well. And I think I, I have to look at them. I didn't break them down by male, female with my clients yet, but I would, I would have to say probably 75% of mine are women too. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's and they're great. Range. I feel like most people I talk to, that's, that's how it is right now. I, I'm really curious. How is it training a two-year-old? <laughs> I can, I can say this, um, you have to have energy. Like that's the number one thing you gotta have. And to be honest with you, like you don't have to be that great of a coach. Right. Cause he's two or she or he is two. Right. But if you're down on the ground, you're there, you're energetic and you're want, you know, trying your best, like the kids will notice that. Mm -hmm. And one of the best games I actually enjoy playing is called hit the coach. You know, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, this run, you know, work on your dribbling and then try to kick the ball at the coach. Mm -hmm. Like I love that one. That's just one um, drill in particular that I really like to do with them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun. I think it is somewhat rewarding you know, to see a kid smile, you know, right. and give them high fives, but right. COVID. Okay. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been great. You know, just seeing kids like that smile light up and like making it fun, I think is very important too. Um, because you know, at the end of the day, you want them coming back because mm -hmm. um, you don't want the kids to be like, eh, I don't like that. Then they don't like soccer when they grow up. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to love it. You know, right. that type of feel. So. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy too. Cause I, I remember when I was really young, when I was like four, that's when I started playing. Um, I, I can vividly remember my practices. Like those, those coaches that I had, they were so energetic. They made it really fun. And I know if it was like really boring and I didn't get anything out of it, I probably wouldn't have wanted to continue. Yeah. Um, so coaches that work with kids that are that age, like are so important. Um, I just know for me, <laughs> one, one of the first, I think it was probably my third client I worked with. It was, uh, it was three brothers. There were three, five and seven and they all like picked on each other. <laughs> and I was too soft to like, I don't know, speak up. And then they all started picking on me. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember, happen. yeah, I remember those that it was like the first month of training. I was just like, man, my, my patience is being so tested right now. And mm -hmm. it made me realize though, you know, like with these kids, it, it has to be fun. And it made me learn I got to be more fun with these kids. Like I can't come in and, and teach them how to do step overs and how to score and how to do all this stuff that they don't even really care about. It, it has to be engaging. It has to be fun. And that, that made me really understand, I think how to be patient <laughs> with kids mm -hmm. working with them. Uh, early patience. on. Right. That's, that's another key element to mm -hmm. training two year olds patience right. for sure. Right. Lots of it. Yeah. So if you look back at the last year, like what do you think has been the biggest like business challenge that you have faced and, and overcome? Oh yeah. Um, I think I'm actually still working through this, but mm -hmm. to be completely honest, I didn't get my LLC until like two months ago. Gotcha. And obviously with, you know, the steps of taking action, that should have been done away earlier. Right. But at the same time, you know, it's the action takers and I didn't take action. But at the same time, I was trying to get clients 
and at the end of the day, it wasn't an excuse, but I have it now. That's the right. key thing. I have my LLC. Oh, the nice. next thing as well, as I continue to scale my business, definitely have some type of insurance mm -hmm. because I, I would try to put in like, at least with my clinics I've done, I've done two, I've actually done three clinics overall, the one free one. And then two of them, I had people actually pay me for, mm -hmm. um, I would try to at least put in some type of liability waiver mm -hmm. of some sort, you know, so parents can read it. They accept the terms and conditions, et cetera. But I think having personal insurance for the type of training, I believe you have it on your website as well as one of your yeah. recommended places. But that's something I, I, I think is a challenge for me to like, okay, I got to figure this out, just commit to it, put it in the budget type thing. Mm -hmm. And that way I have that hundred percent security that somebody's got my back in case something yes. goes wrong, you know? Yeah, no, it's good, man. It, it's good that you're honest about that too. Most people, they know that and then they don't, I don't know, it, it like lingers in their brain. They're like, oh, I know I need to get that, but they, they don't. And then later down the road, they can run into problems. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you have the LLC. That's awesome. Like with the insurance, yeah, uh, I would recommend, it's called K and K insurance. K and K. Um, yeah, and you can call them and literally just tell them, here's what I do. Here's the type of training I do. And they'll walk you through the process of getting set up. Um, I feel like it's very affordable too, um, mm -hmm. but that would be a good resource. Most coaches that uh, don't have that. If they ever ask me, I, I always tell them about that. I mean, I personally use them. Um, they're simple, easy to work with, and that will help you too. If you do, uh, clinics at like facilities or other types of parks that require that, um, you can get like a, you can either get like a half million or a million dollar insurance policy, uh, for, I feel like pretty affordable. It's like a one-time payment and that could vary based on, based off state to state. Um, sure. but I know mine, I think it was somewhere between, um, I need to renew it again in October. I, I think it's anywhere between like two fifty and $400 for the year. That's not bad then. Yeah. So it's pretty affordable. Um, cool, yeah. man. So, so that, that, I guess that's the stuff that gives you more structure, the stuff that, uh, makes you sleep better at night. Those have been some of your challenges. What about like, because I'm really curious about this with, with any coach I talk to What about the challenge of just selling? Yeah. Um, that was actually, I think correlates as well as a, as a business challenge would be figuring out the type of pricing. Cause at first I was like, what do I charge? You know? Mm -hmm. And the way that I first set up was, Oh, or at least I got into the thinking of, oh, I can't charge that much. Nobody's gonna, <laughs> nobody's gonna pay that much. Right. You know, you get in this rabbit trail of nobody will pay that. Mm -hmm. But you can't think that way. You know, especially if I'm trying to do this full time, it's like you got to do the math. Right. <laughs> you know, and also it's your time is your premium, especially for one on ones. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to what you were saying with other. Um, I think it's just on your your Instagram saying like, hey, if you're gonna want to really make your money, you know, like push up that one-on-one -on -one rate. Right. And if people can't afford it, put them in your groups. Right. Yep. You know? And so I've been thinking a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've actually changed my pricing once, um, for, for my one-on-one. -on -one. Cause when I first started out, I was pretty low and to be exact numbers, it was like $35 an mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm. And cause at first I was like, I just need to make money and just get clients. Right. Then my attitude kind of shifted. It's like, you know, I can't, stay there for too long or else right. <laughs> I'll be stuck in that. And right. so I, I jumped it up to 45 an hour for one-on-one. -on -one. But I think there's another time where I've actually been thinking a lot about it too, is I probably could go higher at that point because of the way that I want to scale is with groups. Yes. And that's an easier sell to a parent. It's like, look, Hey, maybe it's 55 an hour now, but mm -hmm. ah, it's too much. Hey, join my group. Yep. It's way less. So I think that's one of the challenges I'm thinking through right now then is my pricing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've told this to a few people and most, I don't think most people would believe this, but it's true. Um, I had lunch with this guy. This was probably 
four years ago and he's a, he's a basketball trainer and everyone wanted to work with him one-on-one. -on -one. Like he was like this one-on-one -on -one guru in basketball. And, uh, we were sitting down and like a year before we, we had lunch, um, we were on the phone and he was like, yeah, like everyone wants to train one-on-one. -on -one. Like I'm just running out of time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, like, why don't you like just start charging more for it? Like tell people that tell new people that it's, it's going to be a price that makes you feel really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And he started doing that, but he didn't raise it enough. So people kept <laughs> really people kept doing it. And, and then when we had lunch, he told me like, I, I think clients were paying, it was like right around 125 per hour um, for, to train with him one-on-one. -on -one. So wow. he was charging, like it was around, um, I think it was around 500 per month. Wow. And, and like clients were, they were gladly investing into his program. Seriously. And, wow. And I was like, well, like, what's your goal, man? Like, what, do you want to keep doing this or do you want to have more people in your groups? And he was like, I have to get more people in my groups. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, what's the first number in your head that is like unbelievably like difficult to tell a parent over the phone where it's going to make you cringe. It's going to make, it's going to make that person cringe. And once, like when he told me, I was like, all right, that's your new number. Like if someone calls you tomorrow, they want to do one-on-one -on -one training. It's going to be that number. And so he, he figured out, um, all he does is he tells parents if they want to work one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be $500 an hour. Wow. And so what he does is he takes that. And if they're like, I mean, the, the top 1% of like wealthy people will absolutely do that with them. Yeah. Uh, but everyone else, like he, he says that over the phone and then he knows it's going to be a reaction. Like what? Or, Oh my gosh. Like, uh, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, well, or you could join our group training program for $150 a month. Boom. <laughs> and everyone started flowing into his groups once he made that like big jump. Because mm -hmm. the jump that he made initially, like people were still wanting to do it. And then once he made a huge jump, something that something he knew was just very uncomfortable. Now it's normal for him to tell parents that because like he's just funneling everyone into the groups. So I would challenge you, man, <laughs> to, to start to think in terms of, you know, if I want to build out my groups, I need to make my one on one price high enough to where if someone's absolutely committed, they're going to do it but 99.9% .9 of people who ever hear that are going to be disgusted about that price. And, mm -hmm. but they're going to be drawn in to the group because it's like, we have this thing here and we have this thing here. The thing down here is still a great program. See how that works. Oh yeah. I, I 100% agree with all that you said there. And, and, and I was sticking through it. It's just like, what's that number that makes me cringe. And I'm just got to think about that. Like even now, like I'm charging 45 an hour for one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I think it's got to be some type of significant jump Yeah. because or else, like you said, people will probably still do it if you just raise it maybe five, 10 bucks. Like, right. You know, so yeah. that's, that's really good. I, I, I mean, just off the top of my head, like it's got to be at, at least in my mind, at least 75 bucks mm -hmm. to a hundred. Yeah. I would go that way right there. or even higher. Right. At least a yeah. hundred. Right. Yeah. And the thing is you'll find, uh, you'll, you will find if you raise, let's say you raise your price today. Right. Yeah. Anyone who's new to your program, they don't know what your price is until they mm -hmm. talk to you over the phone. So I would really encourage you. And I, I want you to try this and then hopefully like in two months from now, we can reconnect on here again and you have someone who's, who's paying you $400 a month for one-on-one -on -one training. So That'd it's awesome. a hundred dollars a session. Um, if you talk to enough people about it, they will absolutely do it. And then everyone else who's trying to make a decision over that sales call, if you bring them into the group setting where it's more affordable, you're going to start to build out your groups over the next six to eight weeks. Um, and that's going to be from, from my experience, that's, that's the fastest way. I was able to transition from one-on-one -on -one training with all of my clients back in the day to purely group training. Wow.
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense though. And I, I guess one question for you, Ben, too, not to really put you on the spot, but like, go for it. What about my current clients? So like, for instance, I have a three, six and 12 month commitment mm-hmm. contract. Mm-hmm. And within those pricing levels too, there's somewhat incentives, you know, to train with me for a year rather than like three months. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess there's really no way to say it. you can't just beat around the bush. You get like, look, my pricing is going up. Yeah. But where's the timing in that? You know what I'm saying? Like somebody just signed up for me right. um, at a certain rate. Mm-hmm. It's like, Hey, when, maybe when this contract's done, then raise it or just get feelers out there type thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, great question. So it, it's all based on their commitment. So let's say someone signed up today for your three month commitment uh, based off your current price. What I would do is I would look on month two to notify them and be like, Hey, uh, in a month from now, like the pricing for our one-on-one program is going to be a little bit higher. You guys can absolutely step into that program, or you can come into our group program at a discount based on what you're currently paying. Mm-hmm. So, so this way, what you're doing is you don't move anyone who's in a current contract with you to get their price to change. Now that price should change when their contract finishes, but right. I would notify them at least 30 days before their contract is done. So they have time to make a decision. But what I've realized is when I give someone that notification in the past, if I sell that they're getting a discount for, for group training, they know they're going to get quality training and now they're going to be paying less than what they were. So now they're Mm -hmm. saving money. And if they want the one-on-one, you know, they, they just know that they're going to have to put more skin in the game. And you'll see that parents will be cool with that. Like they will, they will jump up to that price um, if they really value the one-on-one type of attention. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's, that's very helpful, Ben. Thank you. That's great. You got it, man. Yeah. So I'm really curious when you trace back the last year. um, And I know this is like me putting on the spot big time with this question, but I like it. What is, what is like the biggest failure that you saw over the last year? Like if you had to pinpoint like the thing that you're like, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. Or I wish I wouldn't have done that. Uh, Was there anything that happened over the last year that you thought was maybe a bigger deal than it was? That's a great question. Um, Biggest failure or lesson I've learned this past year. Mm -hmm. I would say, just thinking through this, I think going back to also just making sure I'm set up correctly. Right. Um, I think that's one big thing. I think I need to get right, right, right away. Um, just having that peace of mind of getting insurance, et cetera. Um, I think another big thing might be as well as like these opportunities I had probably this summer to do more clinics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the opportunity was there. I just said, oh man, I can take it easy this week. Mm-hmm. but you know, letting that attitude set in is not mm-hmm. very good. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't help your business. <laughs> um, getting comfortable, right? right. Um, there's a level of uncomfortability that you kind of need to grow. And I, and that's what you just have to do. Right. And I think that's one, that's one area that I think I failed this year was I, I put on two clinics, but so far, but it's already August. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was massive opportunity this spring that I could have done a lot more with, Mm -hmm. um, and this creating that other streams of revenue, you know, with, with camps and clinics, even camps, like I didn't even do a camp yet. I think that's one of the challenges too. I think I can take my game to the next level to challenge me as a coach, as well as actually plan Mm -hmm. an actual camp. Right. Uh, Cause I actually had a coach reach out to me. He's a high school coach, um, in Raleigh. And it's like, Hey, what do you think about putting a camp together? Um, just kind of out of the blue, just texted me. I was like, yeah, I could definitely think about that. Um, but at the time I was like really busy with my clinic and I was like, oh, I'll put that in the back burner, but it never came to fru- fru- you know, fru- fruition. And I was just kind of frustrated with myself. Like, man, that was an awesome opportunity. Mm-hmm. But I just looked at the work and the, sometimes that attitude just destroys everything. Yeah. So, No, it's, it's good, man. Like, I mean, I look at the past week for me, I think I made like 75 mistakes <laughs> with my business. So you, yeah. you just live and you learn. And 
I know with clinics and camps, it takes time. Like that, it's a daunting task to get everything organized, send out the emails, collect all the registration, like get the field space. Like that, that alone is a lot um, to run a camp, especially like a multi-day type of camp. But it's good that you're seeing now that, yeah, you could have those opportunities coming up. And, you know, in 2021, you could, you could be running those all the time. Um, it just takes a lot of planning and it takes a lot of time to run those, uh, properly. Cool, man. Um, no, that's awesome. So let's say someone's watching right now and they don't have any clients yet. And they're like, man, I want to start my soccer training business. Uh, I want to get started. Like, and let's say they reached out to you and they're like, Hey, how, what did you do at the beginning or what, what piece of advice would you give that person if they thinking about it, they want to do it, they just are not taking action or they're just kind of procrastinating. What, what would you tell that person? Yeah, I would say that I would first start out with who, you know, Mm -hmm. because what really helped me out was my connections right away with whatever job I'm at, you know, um, what type of friends I have say, Hey, you know, somebody who's a coach, talk to them, send them an email to give them a call say, Hey, I'm planning to start my private training business. I know you're a high school soccer coach. Any chance I can use your field to start, you know, even if I have to pay for it, right. To start, you know, to start there with one, one person or have a group, or maybe I can come to your session at your high school, you know, have a high school soccer session. Can I come and like, maybe, display a couple of drills, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, know your power base, I guess is what I call it. Mm-hmm. Go through your phone, see who, you know, text them. And as soon as you do that, make that phone call. That's the action that needs to be taken in order you, for you to start. And that's what it did for me was I emailed that coach, that AD that I knew that had field space that knew soccer coaches. And then come to find out this soccer coach is a director of a club. you know it's just just right send that message right yes send send that message (laughs) that's i mean and it sounds this is the thing i've realized it sounds so simple to just get your phone out call someone talk to them see how you can add value to them but it's not, it's, it is simple, but it's not that simple. Most people just will hesitate when they get there. Um, and I know a lot of it just comes down to self-belief. Um, and, and I know for me, if, if I, you know, for some reason moved from Texas and, and went to a different city, I would do exactly what you just said. I would establish myself with people who are already connected to parents or coaches or whatever, And I would just see how, how can I help them and start to establish relationships in that area and know that it's going to take time to build, but that's the fastest way to do it versus just trying to post a bunch of stuff on social media or I don't know. There, there's a lot of stuff out there that I know people do that they're trying to get traction, but what you said, man, that's the recipe. Like you just got to send the message, got to talk to people. I'm glad I said it right, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should have you be doing, you should be doing my videos. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a, uh, what are you, collaboration? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just set up, I have the most ghetto green, sc- uh, green screen you've ever seen. Uh, I'll try to flip this around so you can see it. I love a good green screen. So this will be part of our videos coming up. Let me see if you can see this. Oh, Yeah. We have like the exact same one at the, at the <laughs> office I work at or used to work at. Yeah. It's funny. It's hanging on a mattress. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Nobody knows that though. Yeah, no, no one will know that. My wife came in. She saw it. She started laughing. She's like, wow. <laughs> hey, you got to make it work. Like right. I said, Ben, going back to your very beginning, you got to be scrappy. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. the message you said, man. I was like, you're right, Ben. I got to be scrappy. Just go out there one climb at a time. Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny when I look at it, I'm like, ah, there's a, there's a mattress under that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah. So first off, I, I want to just tell you, thank you so much for coming on here. I remember 
our first couple of interactions, I think it was on Instagram, right? Was that? I think, yeah, I think our first, first connection was, I think you called me or I texted you yeah, or through replied Adam. to one of your emails. Yeah. Through Adam Vasquez. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Hey Ben, I know Adam and he knows you. So <laughs> right. what do you, what do you do? <laughs> right. And then the rest is history. Right. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's been really cool. Like, I love talking to people like that are like you that, you know, you had the idea, you went after it, you know, a year later, you have, you know, a lot of kids that you're working with. And I know you mentioned you're, you're training kids essentially every day, except for Sunday. Um, so you're really busy. And it's, you know, you should be really proud of yourself to like, if you take a step back, and you look at, man, like, I've achieved a lot over the last year. And, and not only have I been able to train these kids, but I know you're the type of person you're not just showing up and doing step overs and playing roll cut. <laughs> like you, you have a real impact on these kids and you're instilling a lot of confidence in their life. And like, you're making a huge difference, man. And it's, it's going to be really cool to see over the next couple of years, how you grow your business and where you take it. And, you know, you should Thank be you. very proud of what you've done. I appreciate all the, all the support too, that Ben, that you've given me, you know, to first of all, get that confidence that I needed to start, mm -hmm. you know, and then just snowballed. And I was I'm very blessed to be in the position I am in and just thankful that I actually took the actions, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just look back on that and it's like, you know what? Great job, Travis. You took an action and look at what, look at what you've done. So. <laughs> yeah, man. No, it's, it's really, it's amazing. I, I love, I love that. Like, that's the thing that fires me up. Cause like, you know, I have that stupid green screen right there. Like there's, there's a lot of times where my brother and I were shooting videos and it's like, man, like, you know, I want to help more coaches and I want to help more coaches, help more kids. And like, it's so refreshing when I get to talk to someone like you that has like done it, you're helping a lot of kids and um, you know, that impact that you have on kids outside of the field. To me, that's like the thing that, makes the biggest difference with what you do. And, you know, yeah. I've been very lucky when I was younger to have like really good coaches who, you know, taught me a lot about discipline. They gave me a lot of confidence. And it's, it's crazy to think, man, like if I didn't have that at an early age, like I have no idea what the heck I'd be doing right now with my life. Like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. That's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. I agree. The confidence is so key to instill in these young athletes, mm -hmm. you know, just, being encouraging for one thing, being an encouraging coach, I mean, that can go a long way with some of these kids, you mm -hmm. know, cause you don't, you don't really know exactly what their family life is like. Right. You know? right. Um, but being a one-on-one -on -one coach, like, I mean, that's, that's intimate, you know, you get to know parts of their life mm -hmm. and that's your chance to impact them, you know, and print in their life of what you have to offer and your value as a coach, you know, in some cases, maybe a father figure one day, you know, Yes. Like some kids may not have a father at home, mm -hmm. you know, you can be that guy. Right. So it's, right. it's a great opportunity. And it's, that's why it's rewarding to be in this business. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's the most fulfilling thing. It's like, you know, if, if there's a kid, they're going through some problems at home or w whatever, it's like, they have a, they have a chance to meet with that coach for an hour. That one hour can change their whole perspective over the next week, month, year, and that's why I think coaches are in a really awesome position to, to be able to help kids on that type of level. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really a privilege for coaches. To agree. That sort of thing. Um, cool, man. Is there anything else that you want to try to add or, you know, if, if someone's watching and, and you want to kind of inspire them to, to take action if they've been a little hesitant? Yeah. Um, I think obviously you got to keep watching Ben Neighbors Instagram videos to gain that confidence you need. Okay, that's number one. Right, buy um, all my products. <laughs> <laughs> buy your products. <laughs> but they truly are helpful, Ben. Seriously, they are. I think the value that you bring as well is this instilling confidence in us, you know, to actually start. And I think what I could tell that person to go ahead and make that first piece of action is don't care what other people think about you. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, everybody's going to have an opinion, right? Like my father-in-law says, everybody's got a butt, you right. know, right. Everybody's got an opinion, right? So what really matters is your opinion of yourself, 
yes. you know, and go out there and do it. I know you have a history of that too, Ben, when you first started. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't care what other people think about me. Right. You know, I just have to go do it because mm-hmm. I know this is what's, what I want to do. Yes. So I think that's maybe one piece of advice to help you. No, man, it's, it's so, it's so critical. Like for someone to literally just turn their phone off for a day, get out a pen and a, and a notepad and just be like, here's what I want to do and not run it by anyone <laughs> and just go for it. And I, I can guarantee it. That's one of the things that really slowed me down. And the progress I had at the very beginning was, you know, I was, I was hanging around a bunch of idiots. That's number one. Uh, uh-huh. Your I friends. Was, yeah. I was a huge idiot. Um, and I surrounded myself around people who would never start a business. Like they wouldn't think that way. And so it crept into my mind of like, man, I, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, mm-hmm. And then once I started to think how you just described, like, it's like, you know what, man, like life is short. I want to, I want to help kids. I want to do this. And if this takes me years to figure out great, like I'm, I'm going to exactly. do it. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says or thinks. Cause like, you know, if I'm getting caught up with what they're thinking about, like, how is that helping the kids that I want to work with? Exactly. And also to follow up on that too, Ben, like don't get into that thinking of I have to make thousands of dollars right away. Right. Or millions right away. Right. It's right. Not For me. Yeah, exactly. It just won't happen. But at the same time, like getting that first $15, you yeah. know, like that was a big deal. You know, me getting my first client, that first payment, mm-hmm. you really see the reward there you know, and just like, man, I could grow this. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like, you know, you start, you have to start out making a million dollars the first year. It's like, dude, relax, you know, like make it right though, you know, slow, build it right, do it right. And then that way you don't have to think about my business is failing because I don't have the proper Mm -hmm. things aligned, Mm -hmm. you know, myself included here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm just preaching to myself, but yeah, that's, that's the type of attitude you should take. Just don't feel like you have to make millions of right away. Go out there. Don't, don't think about what other think about, people think about you. Just mm-hmm. do it. Right. Which right. is hard to do, but you can do it. Yeah. No, man, it's, it's great advice. And I've thought about this a lot with different coaches that we work with, but like coaches are so good at motivating and encouraging kids to be like, you know what? Don't, don't worry about what anyone's thinking about you. Just like have the confidence, go do it. And then I feel like coaches are very, can be very like hypocritical where they're like, kids go do this. And then when it comes to them, they're like, Oh crap. <laughs> like exactly. I just told this seven year old to be as confident as a lion. And then I'm over here and I can't do this mm-hmm. thing. And, uh, and I know I'm guilty of that too. Like there's been plenty of times I'll tell a kid something. And then like, when I have to make a big decision on something, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I should do that. And it's like, man, I just told this kid, like <laughs> something really important. I'd need to follow my own advice. Coaching um, yourself. Right. Yeah, man. So first I, I wanted to say again, thank you for jumping on here. I would love to have you back on here. I think it'd be good to have like an annual podcast with you. Uh, I'll be to great. See where you are next year, this time in August. And, uh, it's going to be really cool to, to have you back on here and share your success for, for 2021. And okay. uh, yeah, man, is there any anything else you want to chat about before we go? No, I just wanted to say thank you to you as well, Ben. You know, thanks for having me on. It was a privilege to be on here. Cool. Um, it's been great that you've been doing this. You've been helping a lot of people, myself included. So you should be proud of what you've done as well, you know, with your, with your coaching, uh, right. other coaches, your coaching coaches. Uh, <laughs> Sounds yeah. weird when I tell people that. I'm like, coach to coach, coaches. <laughs> Business coach. Right. Yeah. Cool, man. No, I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a lot of work, but yeah, I love it. And to be able to chat with someone like you who's helping kids on a day-to-day basis, like, it's, I love it. It's That makes me so happy, dude. Like, when I get to, to chat with someone like you and, um, like I said, yeah, you got to be really proud of what you're doing and, and just keep it up, man. Like keep building on, on what you're doing. Um, cause kids really need you. 
Like uh, kids, right. kids desperately need people that are that are like you, that are great coaches and great mentors. And yeah, man, just just keep up, keep up the good fight. I appreciate it, Ben. You as well, man. All right, you got it, dude.